it used to be that that um, they they believed or their, their um, unique value was that they had all these analysts and they had these editors and they could tell you what was really going on better than you could, ever could. They were everywhere and they could see what was happening and they, they thought about it a lot and so you uh, had to listen to them and, and, the, and that you, you wanted to listen to them because they, they were uh, authorities. Well now their authority is being eroded by other people saying, wait a second, that's not right, that's not real, that's not what's really going on. How about this? Or they're lying, they're absolutely lying when they're saying this. They're, like last year at the in the U.S. presidential election where you had Dan Rather, this figure of super authority in, the New, York, in, the, in New York and in the U.S. Uh, media uh, universe. He comes out and he, and he, and he, and he uh, broadcasts an absolute falsehood about George Bush, and whether you like George Bush or not, you don't tell lies about a presidential candidate with the expectation of taking him down because you are media and you have that right to uh, have your way in, a, in an election. You can change the course of an election by what you report on, and, if, and so we're going to tell a, we're going to tell something bad about George Bush, and that's going to kill his campaign. And um, it was just amazing arrogance to, to have done that. And five years ago, he would have gotten away with it. That's what they did. They were able to do that kind of stuff without question. This time, though, within hours of the release of that, of that broadcast, the uh, bloggers were analyzing uh, the story, and the story had to do with typography, actually, um, and saying, wait a second, these, these documents were, which you claim to have been made in 1970." No, 1971 or whatever, uh, on a typewriter. Well, there was no typewriter that could do this. And actually, if you overlay the same stuff on top of something that we generate from, you know, a word uh, application, um, it turns out to be precisely identical. So this is a fabrication. For the first time, media was exposed. It was like the fable, this, the children's fairy tale about the emperor having no clothes. All this time, they've been going around acting like they're wearing the most amazing robes of authority. And somebody says, wait a second. Yeah, he's a guy's actually naked. And he's not, what he's saying isn't really true. And it turns out it really wasn't true. And it demystified. All of a sudden, all of those mystical elements that had been attached to media started to, to break down and the arrogance of media started to become visible. It happened in the UK where the BBC decided to mount its own campaign against Blair. Again, whether you like the war or not, the instrument of, um, that's supposed to connect you to reality should not be deliberately connecting you to irreality or, or untruth. Okay. And uh, in the United States, there was the case of Jason Blair, this reporter who fabricated stories. There was the case of a Kelly who worked with USA Today. He fabricated stories. Um, there was a, it became, there was a series of things that were happening that, that were undermining the credibility of media. The only thing that media really has, the only thing that news media really has is this credibility. It was disappearing. And it was being eroded on the other side they're, they were destroying their own credibility, but it was also being accelerated by the arrival of the blog universe or blogverse that could um, comment and talk about and, find, and, and, and argue with and offer a new and sometimes even better analysis of what's going on. And suddenly you discovered, hey, there's a lot of other ways of looking at the world. I used to um, open the New York Times every morning and say, so this is what's going on in the world. Now that's not the first place I start anymore. I look at the blogs and see what does my favorite blogger think is going on today. Um, and you realize that what they be, what these guys have had all this time is these, these mass media people, they just had big blogs that nobody could talk back to. They're just another group of individuals that think they know what's going on and, and they're no different than the other people making blogs. And in fact, in some cases, they're even worse because they know less a lot of reporters know less about what's going on than the people who are actually specialists, the people who looked at those documents and said, that's Times Roman, that's not the right thing. Those, those journalists didn't know that. Um, when they looked at that document, they couldn't tell it was Times Roman. They couldn't even, they couldn't even analyze it to think it was, it was a forgery. It took experts out in the blog world to actually put that argument together, to make that observation and to, and to spread the word about it. 
revolutions that uh, overturn the established order, I like. Um, I think they're usually the established order needs to be overturned, and the bloggers is in the process of doing that. Blogging, bloggers, uh, major, major change for the good.